you know, people sometimes say they can't cry yeah. after they've taken testosterone. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I cry all the time. <laughs> So you said you're 73? Yes, I'm 73. Okay, so you've been on this journey for a while now. I have. So how has your concept of your gender changed over time? In many respects, I don't feel my gender has ever changed. Mm -hmm. Things that have changed have been my relationships with other people, how people respond to me, and so I had to learn all about those things. But that didn't change who I was. And after a long time, I also I realized I was bisexual, which I had never thought I would be. Mm -hmm. But I realized as I came into complete comfort in my body that I could relate to other people differently, yeah. both men and women. As a kid, I was very constricted to how I was allowed to express myself. And as a survivor of, of child sexual abuse and trafficking, my gender was very policed. When I started to understand my queerness and like find language for it, I realized I was just like coming back to what was always true about myself. I have also, re I'm, I realized through transitioning that I was attracted to men, which surprised me. When I started transitioning and like looking and feeling more like how I had always seen myself, I could be more open to that attraction. And so now I think I'm still really homo in that I'm like attracted to people like me. I'm attracted to other queer, trans people who aren't restricted in their gender expression. So I'm very like T for T now. I like other trans masculine people mostly. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, one of my best friends was a very angry lesbian. Uh, rode a big motorcycle, yeah. you know, just like started taking testosterone and started to relax. Started to realize he didn't have to struggle. You know, people sometimes say they can't cry yeah. after they've taken and testosterone. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I cry all the time. <laughs> I cry at, you know, McDonald's commercials. For me, transitioning was just like finding, com like coming back home to my body. Mm -hmm. And because I was able to be more present, I was able to like not let the anger be something that I just put onto other people. You know, like I still have a lot of anger and have a lot of reasons to be angry and understand what that means as a black man in this world. So I feel like I, I found ways to pay more attention to my feelings because I can be more present in my body now. So I, I noticed in, in your story, you had visibility. In my case, it was very, very invisible. Transness was almost impossible to see. So for you, what was the main feature of that visibility? The thing that made it possible for me was that there were a few black trans men who I saw and I was like, okay, this is something that black people do. But it was seeing people like Marquise, seeing Dr. Marshall Green's documentary, It Gets Messy in Here, about trans masculine people and just like butch lesbians navigating restrooms. And by this point, like Tumblr was a space for people to really share things in a way and like really have a space to, to archive a lot of their stuff. Sharing, here's how I did this, here's how I figure out how to start hormones, here's how I, there's a letter you gotta get for a doctor. And they were the ones sharing all the information with me and each other about how do we actually, how do we actually transition in this way? and. It wasn't so much mainstream visibility as it was like the internet really made it possible for people to like house their stuff and share it. It was using the same tools that, you know, these other guys who wrote these books used, but it was able to be available online and able to get spread more widely. What does it feel like for you to see all of this visibility that we have now for trans men? Well, it's very gratifying, frankly. I mean, when I joined Lou Sullivan's group mm -hmm. in the late 80s, everybody wanted to be stealth. And I was thinking that that was not healthy. We have to make our space in the world, we have to become visible. The fact that all this visibility has happened, it's been a, a difficult transition for our community because a lot of us come to this place from different perspectives. Yeah. We have different baggage we carry that makes us either desperate to be seen or terrified to be seen mm -hmm. from stealth mode mm -hmm. to existing. The way I think about visibility is that it's complicated. I definitely think it 
with this increase in visibility, there's been an increase in violence that the yep. community has faced. Yep. And I think what saved me was being able to see possibility models out there. So what do you want to tell the older generation? Uh, I have a lot of gratitude for people who create a lot of models and pave the way for a lot of us to be able to even consider living more authentically. What I'd like to tell the younger generation, first of all, personally, I'm very proud of our younger generation. But I think if I'm representing my generation, I think there's a lot of mixed feelings. I think there's a lot of pain and frustration among the older generation. I think some of them look at the younger generation and they are fearful of the expansiveness mm -hmm. because they've had to hold themselves in for so long and some are jealous mm -hmm. because I wish I could have started this when I was their age. Yeah. I wish I could have had community. There's a lot of pain yeah. in the older generation and a lot of fear about aging. Mm -hmm. And I think the younger generation needs to know we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. You know, the older generation is not just shoulders that you stand on, mm -hmm. it's people with feelings. Yeah. And I think it would be really nice if our community could model intergenerational inclusiveness. And I would just say back to the older generation, like all of this is still for you. And I think, I think there's a lot of us who are looking to older trans people to see like, what does it feel like? What does it mean to actually age like this? There should be a lot more spaces for intergenerational conversations and so that Absolutely. people don't just fade away. You know, these names of people who have already passed don't get forgotten either. Yeah, and I've been very, very heartened by young students mm -hmm. who are desperately seeking their history. I'm just glad to see our younger generation be so inquisitive and so responsive. Mm -hmm. And I'm just very excited. Thank you. I'm so excited that we've had this conversation. Me too. It's been so grounding to see, okay, like one day, everything willing, I will also be a 73 year old trans guy, maybe talking to some 30 year old one day. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.